Study guides are doing audio connectors. The first one is headphone, con headphone cables terminate in what type of connectors? You guys already know this, right? Yes. This is the one you guys have for all your little pods you yeah. stick in your, your earbuds. What is that called, Aiden? One eighth. That is an eighth inch connector. So if you are anywhere but in the United States, what would you call that, Nate? 3.5. Okay. Yeah, for the announcements, of course. All right. Wow. But if you're more professional, because you want more surface space, you have that size, which is what? One fourth. That's a quarter inch. And if you're cool, you call it eighth inch and quarter inch. If you walk into a store that's a professional audio store and you say, do you have any one fourth inch connectors? They'll look at you like, weird. okay. Where are you from? Venezuela? Come on. So you say quarter inch. That's quarter inch. Why is it more professional, Nate? Because it has more surface area. Exactly. Oh, he remembers. It has more surface area there to make a better contact. Wow. So you see it on professional things like our mixing board and other such things. What is the correct term for a microphone? So Mr. Walker says, go get me a microphone cable. XLR. And you say, Mr. Walker, you mean an XLR? Yeah. Okay, it has a socket end, a plug end. Everyone in the industry calls it other things, but I don't in this class, and Nate knows that. Uh -huh. This is the socket end, the plug end. That's the plug end, right? Very good. Three pins. That's why it's X. L, R. Originally probably ground, left, right, but it doesn't matter. You don't care about that. Get me an XLR cable. And by the way, when I wind up my XLR cables, I always plug them into each other in case they go outside or can get any other kind of damage, and then it kind of keeps those connectors clean. Wait, so clean. which one's out and which one's in? Um, Are you asking the plug and socket end? So, you know, a socket on a wall, right? Uh -huh. You go plug in your vacuum, you plug it into the oh, socket, okay. right? You have a plug, plug. And by the way, everyone calls it a plug. You guys got any plugs around here? So what you should do is you should pull out an XLR. Yeah, here's one. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, AC plugs. But anyway, you now know plugs and sockets. You might use other terms in the future. That next one is one that you only see on old devices. I asked you, I think, last time, does anyone have like an old... Yes. TV? Atari game My Xbox yes. 360. Had those. Did they really? Yeah. yeah. Your old Nintendo? Okay, gosh, it. I thought you anything that weird plug said Nintendo Xbox or Xbox yeah. wouldn't Nintendo have it. It said Atari. <laughs> Do we have anything in this room that takes these old connectors? <clears throat> yes. You guys remember. A piece of junk TV. Can you zoom in over here? <laughs> this piece of junk TV that I don't want to replace because it's got the 4 by 3 ratio. There it is. But what do we call these connectors? RCA. RCA. Boy, you guys are going to be learning so many acronyms. RCA actually is a brand, but they got their name on them. Did I already tell you yellow, white, red? Yes. Yeah. What is the yellow for? Video. Yellow is always video. White and red, therefore, are? Left and right. Audio. Audio. And a good rule of thumb is red, right. Everybody in the industry that I know, everyone says they go white into the left, red into the right. Just get in that habit, red, right. It's not on the state test, but it's very useful in future things in life. Okay, scrolling to the next one. USB. You guys see this all the time. Yeah, in fact, I'm not even going to pass it around. This is the most common. I think it's called the USB-C. Yes. How many kinds of USBs are there? There's a lot. There's at least seven. Your phones connect to them. Everything connects to USBs. That baby right there is almost always like on the end of a mouse or a keyboard or anything. Okay, let's keep going. B and C. How many different acronyms are we going to learn today? HDMI. Yes, oh, I didn't grab it. Yeah, I did. BNC. And does Walker like these? No. Yes, Walker does like these because yes. they. They take on. the camera down with them. You remember? See? The strange things that students remember. Wait, what's so the. the these were pretty much the cheapest cameras that would shoot 4K and had BNC connectors. So they are professional. But just barely. And they were still around 1800 bucks. <laughs> so, you know, that's a chump change for you guys. Yeah, that's like a <clears throat> nice computer. On there. It's a couple of paychecks from Walmart. <laughs> okay, so it pushes on and then it twists and locks. Wow. Wait, so what is that called? The it's second one? BNC. It's really funny. It's an abbreviation of something like Bayonet something Conant. It's just some dude that made it up, I guess. But anyway, I like him. Because they don't come off in the middle of a shoot, 
unless someone trips and then the whole camera goes down because it doesn't let go of the Yeah, camera. that's what I remember about it. It takes the camera down with them. <laughs> I should pass that around one more time. <laughs> oh my God. Did you just pass it around? I tried. Okay. <laughs> he tried. All right, the one that you guys have everywhere in your life. HDMI. HDMI. Now, what I don't have up there is they actually have like three sizes of HDMI. That's the very most common. You always see that. Actually, where'd that BNC go? I'm going to put that up to the camera, too. <coughs> so the HDMI. We all like... Yeah, go ahead and toss it. Nice toss. Your turn. No, it isn't. It's the camera's turn. <laughs> okay, now it's your turn. So they would Even the BNCs have plug ends and socket ends, but it's kind of funny because they look a little bit different. All right, so huh. is this side right here an HDMI? It is, right? So I think they call it mini or micro. Thank you. Walker's room, studio speaking. Well, that's really professional. Just say Studio ALA. All right. Yeah, uh, Paul Johnson. So those are all the different also, kinds of connectors that you probably need to know right there. If you change from one side to another, like this cable does here, it goes from a what? Adapter. Good job. What is this called? XLR. XLR to a? Quarter inch. Quarter. Therefore, it is a what? Adapter. Yeah. It adapts from one to another, right? Okay, let's go ahead and scroll down and show if that isn't the, oh, that was it right there. Okay. So all these are adapters. I could ask you right now, but I won't, I won't waste your time, but sometime we can play it if we play a stump the chump kind of a thing. Because if you can sort of tell that socket and that plug, they're different. And actually, these two are very common because you're always adapting your headphones. Uh, the quarter inch? Yep, the quarter inch and the eighth inch. Yep. Okay, keep scrolling. And we go to microphones. Cool. What is a lavalier? It's oh, Mrs. Chingus, you are going to miss these jokes. Mm -hmm. It's a microphone you wear on a person or that's what's on it. You wear on a person? It is correct. It is not a lady who rides side saddle in the cavalry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the lavaliers. Wow, that is a really lame joke. I thought it was funny when I first put that up there. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's really bad. Yeah, I was really confused. It's not even a dad it's joke. It's not even funny. No. <laughs> when, when, you, when you say it's so funny, it's so... No, how would you say it? It's so funny, it's bad. I guess it's so lame. Yeah, that's true, too. It's so lame, it's not even a dad joke. Okay, so that is correct. If you, if I had one, which I don't have for an example, but oh, I'll pretend this there. is, the lavalier clips on right here, typically. Although in this industry, we find all kinds of places to clip lavaliers so they are not seen. <laughs> Quite often, you guys don't even know this, yeah, in a movie yeah. set, it's right there. And it's in their hair, and you can't even see it. I don't know, not quite often, but fairly often. Especially Broadway if they're wearing a wig. Broadway does that a lot, too. What's that? Broadway does it a lot. And Broadway, too. yeah. Exactly. The, the school plays just like tape it to their face. Yeah. This, this is one of my favorite places. I put a lavalier right here. If you ever watch a movie and there's uh, a plant or flowers on the table, you look really close, you'll probably see a microphone hidden in there. That's a good place to hide a microphone. And actually, the truth of it is, they're almost always, oh, where is that? Oh, it's on the camera. They're almost always that right there. That's why they call it a boom mic, because it's on a boom pole and it's just like, barely out of the frame. You ever guys, you guys ever seen the, a movie where you see yeah. the shotgun mic come in a little bit? Yeah. It's kind it ruins of, the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> Okay, now you have your pickup patterns. That means the, the different mics pick up in different like directions. Okay. We don't have that either. Do we have a shotgun mic in this room right here? Yeah. Yep. We have one on the camera and we have one right there. Right. And Why do they call it a shotgun a mic? Because it's like a shotgun. It picks up on a shotgun straight. If you were to pull a trigger and there was actually some shot in here, it would go like that. Uh. So, uh... It picks up in front. It also does pick up a little bit because of screwy science. It picks up a little bit like right in that area too. So sometimes you'll see it drawn with a little bit right there to be accurate, but really you pick it up like this. So I should be holding a microphone, but I'm lazy. This is my shotgun microphone. All right. So Aiden is talking right there, but I got a pointed back at Tempest. Can I hear Aiden? No. It would be sort of like this. And now you can hear me now. So it's very nice because it's very directional and it picks up at a fairly good distance. So we're using a shotgun mic to pick me up at about 15 feet, which is crazy, but it works good enough. They really are good up to about five feet. Okay, your standard cardioid, and I guess I better get one. So this is kind of a standard handheld mic. 
it really should be what they call a sure SM58 or SM57, the most common you see them everywhere you go. And does this pick me up pretty well right here? Yeah. How about right here? No. no. Yeah, it already starts going. However, stand-up like comedians in, love like... these things because of that proximity effect. Because they can do things. They can say, so the teacher came up to me and whispered in my ear, Walker. And it sounds really cool over the PA system because I'm really close like that. So it's good to have if you're going to work a mic or if you're going to sing into a mic, but it's not that great on a video shoot. I can't pick you up from a distance. All right, so if a cardioid There's picks like up There's like a movie in where they're talking into one of those the whole time. What's that? There's a movie where they just talk to those the whole time. You, you never see it. In, well, you see it in a movie whenever there's like a reporter. Yeah. Other than that, you would never use this on a movie set. <laughs> That'd be yeah. funny, though. Or uh, like a movie following like a scene or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't use it. Okay, 90% of the time, <laughs> I'm an audio guy. And, I'm, and I've been assigned to go film a movie and, and work on a movie set, and I get paid a thousand bucks a day. If I break this out and say, okay, let's start, I'd get fired. 90% <laughs> of the time, you can never use one of these. But you're right, if it's in the shot. Uh, let's see. So, if a cardioid picks up in this direction, and for some reason, cardioid comes back to uh, cardio, which is heart, and I guess they kind of think this is like a heart shape or something. I don't know if that helps you remember it. But it is a cardioid pickup pattern. It isn't really a hard shape, I don't know. One of these days I'll look up where they came up with that term. But if it picks up like this in front, if this was an omnidirectional, where would it pick up? Over here. Yep. It hears me here, hears me here. Okay. What is that, Verizon? Can you hear me now? Okay, scroll down. Now, do I have you, like, draw on yours, the pickup patterns you guys already have? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, I forgot one. Can anyone guess what this one does? Takes and sights. Yeah. It's basically like having two microphones inside one capsule. And so it's got a microphone that picks up over here and a microphone that picks up over here. So if you draw bicycle tires, bi-directional, then that's how it picks up. Very rarely do I use one of those. It doesn't make any sense. But you could have two people singing. They got their headphones on. They sing in perfect harmony. One person singing here, one person singing there. But most of the time, I just get out two mics anyway. I'd rather have two mics and put them exactly where I want them than just use one. And happens to be that's the most expensive. Okay, moving right along. Oh, yeah, I should point out this. Shotgun's the most common term, but it's also hypercardioid or supercardioid because it still picks up like a cardioid, except for add another five feet. That's why it's hyper. Okay, int and ext. What do you think that stands for? Internal and external. Correct. So, if I'm using the internal mic, it's the microphone right here. If I'm using an external microphone, it's like the one that Tempest has on the camera back there. We'll pretend it's right here. Okay. So this is an external microphone, plugs into the camera, and I tell the camera, I don't want to use the internal built-in microphone, switches to external, it's using this. And can I do that? Can I actually have a cable connected from here? I've got an XLR cable connected and then have someone talk into the mic. Yeah, yeah you're you doing it with that one. You bet. Yep. That's so what we could take that mic off on that camera and we could walk around and talk to people. Like, so what about the feelings of the camera? It feels bad because you're not using the internal. I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. The, how often does the internal work? Does it work? Yeah, so the internal cameras, uh, internal microphones are good for usually up to about five feet. Uh, you get a decent professional one, it's actually usable, but if you're going to go anywhere bes beyond five feet, you better have another mic. And obviously the most common one is a lavalier. Walker doesn't like lavaliers because I always have problems with it. The first time someone says, okay, please stand and recite the pledge with me, poof, I just heard it, right? <laughs> they move around, you hear a rustling. If it's a wireless, you pick up a radio station. Or the batteries die. <laughs> I much prefer an overhead. In fact, I just I almost always just use a shotgun mic. Wait, is but there normally a shotgun mic? In the mic industry, over? I'd be fired because a lot of people want to have a lavalier on them. Also, you see the lavalier. You see the lavalier. I don't want people to see the lavalier because that's just kind of who I am. All right, so you got internal, external. Uh, have you on seen the, it? On when, our like, other the expensive cameras, you rather like see beards, it. on the. Like the little yeah. microphones? There you go. Yeah. Put it in the bird's nest right there. 
Internal and external, it's really easy. On this one, you look for inside here, it says shoe mic, because this is called the shoe, or external, or I mean, or internal, I think. But it should say internal and external, I don't know why they call it shoe mic. Okay, moving down, XLRs. Oh, I should show you, so on this camera, and I encourage you to do it, actually. I encourage you to use a lavalier, we have lavaliers. So plug in here, and use a mic and get a better sound. So, uh, what are the consonants called that sound like little explosions when spoken in a mic? Plosives. Plosives. Just like explosions, so write in the word plosives there. And P's, B's, K's, and T's all sound like it. Who has a name that has a, a plosive to begin with? Tempest does. So if you, were, if you walked up to a sensitive mic, it didn't have any kind of a filter on it, and you said Tempest, it'd go too. You ever heard that? I'm pleased to be here today. Boom. <laughs> so I have this ongoing thing with all of my students. If you're ever in an assembly and someone does that and they say, uh, I'm pleased to be here, or by the way, and it just blows up on the microphone, if you raise your hand and say plosive, I give you candy. They're going to look at you like you're weird, but that'll be part of the fun for me. Wait. That's a plosive! Walker, that's a plosive, I get a candy! Uh, wait. Yeah. So, how well can a camera work on a drone? Terrible, because the drones are noisy. Put this in front of a microphone to filter out plosives. What is this thing called? It's a pop filter. A pop filter. You can also use it if you don't like too much caffeine in your drink. Just pour your drink through that. What are you talking about? Pop! Okay. You want the caffeine, You're such you? a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Gosh. even funny enough to be a dad joke. What's right. with the boomer thing? So anyway, we got a shot of Chingus' sister singing a pop song into a pop filter. And does that filter out the plosives? Yes. That's what it's for, right? I don't know if it's So you take some theirs. woman's black nylons, you stretch it over a round frisbee, and you got a pop filter. <laughs> do we have one? Yeah. yeah. We should yep. In our sound booth, we do. Okay, name a, a name for the audio device that has inputs and outputs. Mixer. Yeah, we wrote down a whole bunch of different names because you hear a bunch. A mixer? Board. A board? How about a mixer board? A mixing board. Yeah, you can combine them. Console, a mixing console. And then the one you call it if it's really expensive. A desk. All right, scroll down a little bit. Let's take a look at them. There's ours. That one is like one model different than ours. It's almost exactly ours. The only difference is I think ours only has one fader for both left and right. Other than that, it's about the same as ours. And there's a desk. That's at Skywalker Ranch. That's where everyone mixes their movies. Every Marvel movie, Star Wars movie, pretty much is mixed there. And uh, that has a whole bunch of buttons, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's scroll back up to this. Can you imagine trying to memorize what all those mean? That's what's fun about this. Because if you memorize all these, then you've got them all. It's just more of them. But I didn't do that. I was really rude to people that were annoying. I would have often have uh, like a daddy who brought in his daughter to sing, and, and, and he would say, can you turn up the volume on my daughter so we can hear her voice louder? And I'd say, oh, yes, that's, that's this button. Or rock guitars is more common. I want my solo to cut through a little bit more. Oh, I've got the cut through button right there, you know. And I would move a button, and I didn't even change anything because it wasn't even on the same microphone input. They would go, oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> but the truth of it is, if you know one column, you pretty much know them all. So go back to this. Just we have something like 12 inputs. This probably has, oh. 128. It could. 128 is a good, good guess, actually. That's a, that's a common large desk. So if you ever go into Skywalker Ranch, you don't say, nice mixer. You say, dude, nice desk. that's a nice desk. And he says, yeah, we got it for hundred and no, we got it for about $420,000. It was a steal. Which would be what? about the right price on that one. That was probably about a half a million dollar desk. A desk uh -huh. for that much? Yep. Yep. So you can go home and tell your mom and dad you want a half a million dollar desk. And they'll think you're talking about something like Mr. Moody's old wood desk he left here. I would say that would be the price of the one that's in the uh, Oval Office, the Resolute Desk. That's probably worth a half a million. What are VU meters? Volume units. 
volume unit. A lot of people thought it stood for voltage unit. That doesn't make any sense. It's for volume. Okay, scroll down. We'll take a look at what those are. All right. These are the old ones. Looks like an old speedometer from back in the day. From 0 to 120 miles an hour. But it would have a needle, and most people think they're still the most accurate. <laughs> so you have LED displays here. But which one would be better, this LED display or this one? That one. Because it's got more segments, right? So that's also how you can tell if you've got a nice, expensive piece of equipment. I've actually seen some LED displays on some gear that have three. <laughs> fleet, 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 right? So, oh, I should also say this. Uh, this is, we're playing Goldilocks right here. What's wrong with the input on this one? It's too high. It's red lines, so you're getting distortion all the time. <laughs> right? Sounds like you're screaming into a mic. What's wrong with this one? Too low. And Goldilocks? If it just barely is hitting the red, that's where you want it. Okay, what is a fader? Okay, now we're talking on our mixer board. It's like your control gate. I want you to slide back up to the top then. Right here. These are called faders. Okay? So they control the audio. There's actually three or four ways to control the audio. First of all, on the input. You can actually control some of the audio by changing the bass, how loud the bass is, and how loud the, they call it treble, highs and lows. And then uh, right here with the fader. So the fader is the most convenient because it's got the most fine tune adjustment. So you say, okay, our anchors are not loud enough. Savannah has a cold. She's whispering, crank her mic up a little bit and push it up. I can't turn my own mic up. Nope. Well, that would be pretty interesting to try. No. Nope. <laughs> you could have a remote for that nowadays. I'm going to go back down. Okay, go back down. That's what a fader is, and then I think we had a pot. Oh, panning, yeah. So if panning left to right is what you do in video, what do you do in audio? You uh, move the audio. You pan left and right. So you have a knob there, and those knobs are called pots, short for potentiometer. So you can say literally, like you're in the kitchen, adjust the pan pot. It's really true. So you pan with the knob left or right. That's what panning is. It's just the same as a video, only you do it with a knob. And the last one, gnats. What are gnats, and why would they enhance your soundtrack? Because they're annoying. Natural ambient right? sound. Natural ambient sound. So the story I always say about this is when Walker was really kind of dumb and naive, <clears throat> I was even in audio. This is what was embarrassing. And uh, we did a film shoot in Hawaii. And we're at Hanama Bay. And the guy that we hired to actually have a boom mic and go get gnats. Well, I just told the story, basically, to do our sound. While we were waiting and getting makeup and everyone blocked and everything like that, he's gone. And he comes back and he says, I've got some nice gnats. He said it to me and the director. I was the producer. And I'm like, Okay, good. Yeah, good. Glad you got them nice gnats. Show me a mason jar of the gnats you caught. I didn't know what gnats were. What he did is he went down to the shore there and he got some sounds that were natural ambient sounds. Which would be what then? The ocean surf, right? And we used it. So we took back his gnats and we added them to the soundtrack, and it made the soundtrack sound better, just wherever we wanted to. Suddenly we'd cut to a shot of, uh, of them running up the beach, like you do in Baywatch every episode, and we heard the sound. <laughs> okay, close your eyes right now. What natural ambient sounds do you hear? Yeah, Naturally. anything but natural, though. That's unnatural. You hear anything else? Computer, revving. Yeah, you can hear, often you can hear the HVAC system, which means heating, ventilation, air conditioning. And that's natural ambient sound. And that does it for today. And I know we were going to do some more stuff. I was going to show you some premiere, but we got to get going on announcements. Ready, break.